Hello and welcome to this wonderful Q&A session of the films, The Man with the Answers and Red, Yellow, Pink. These are two amazing feature films being played out uh, at the first week of Kashish 2021, uh, which is going to be starting from August 19th. The Q&A is being hosted by the wonderful Kezad Kotwal, uh, who is a producer, director, actor, writer, and designer. Wow, he wears many caps more than me. Uh, he has worked on over 200 theater and film productions and won an Emmy Award for Art Direction in 1996. Congratulations, uh, Kezad. He's a dear friend and strong supporter of Kashish and was a jury member in Kashish 2016. So welcome, Keza, to host the Q&A. Uh, we have Yolanta and uh, Andreas. Oh, Yolanta is the director of the film Red Yellow Pink, and Andreas is the producer of the film Red Yellow Pink, and David is the actor in the wonderful film Red Yellow Pink. And nice. we have uh, Stelios, who is the director of the film Man with the Answers, and we have Tony and Basilis, who are the lead actors of the film The Man with the Answers. Over to you, Keza. Thank you so much. Um... It's an honor to be here and I've uh, watched both the films and uh, congratulations, first of all, um, on making those films because I know how hard it is to make cinema, especially cinema that uh, tells uh, stories that are not uh, perhaps of the mainstream. So uh, uh, really well done on, on uh, both the films. Let me start with uh, both the directors, with uh, Stelios and Yolanta. Uh, can you uh, tell us a little bit about why you chose this particular story uh, that each of you uh, tells in your respective films? I, I really wanted to tell a story, um, a road trip um, to uh, the sort of experience that I had. So I started writing uh, this story that shifted um, in, in too many rewrites. Um, and I really wanted to connect um, uh, Greece with the rest of Europe as a road trip. So um, that's how I, I, I mean, that, that's what, that was the initiative. And then um, like, uh, it's, it took me a few years to complete the screenplay. It was uh, my, my, my second feature, but my first uh, co-production. So it took some time to, um, all the pieces come together and um, let the story unfold as a, a gay road trip between uh, these two characters, a German and a Greek. Great, great. And Yolanda, uh, can you talk a little bit about why you chose this story? They are two real stories. Eine, die ich in Polen gehört habe. One she uh, learned about in Poland. Und die andere ist äh, äh, von meinem Freund, was ich miterlebt habe. And one she uh, got witnessed by her friend because she you know, knew him. Uh, and those stories are combined to that uh, film Rattle Pink. And the friend of her died on AIDS uh, and oh. had very similar uh, situation which you see in the film, the tragic and the stuff. Great. Very sorry to hear about your friend. Stelios, um, I've been watching European cinema, and I'm just going to use that as a big umbrella term right now, uh, for a very long time. And uh, I think this is the first time that I've watched a European film told primarily or a, a lot in English. Can you talk a little bit about that choice and what that may mean to you in the largest uh, sort of uh, system of European cinema? English wasn't uh, more or less uh, a choice. Uh, it was a, a, ne a ne necessity between um, these two characters in order to communicate, the German and the Greek. Uh, the Greek didn't know German. He was, he's, he's trying to learn during the trip. Uh, but the, um, it was a common ground, English, to communicate. Um, I didn't start the film in order to make an English film. I didn't have this, this need. I, like my initiative was to do a Greek film uh, or a film that was Greek or maybe uh, with German and so on. But um, English is just the common ground that these two characters have to talk and have to adapt in order uh, to find this common ground in order to connect. Uh, so let me ask the actors this question, um, uh, Anton and Vasilis. Um, I assume you both either grew up uh, bilingual with uh, Greek and English and German and English um or with um, one more dominant uh 
what was what were the challenges of uh, doing a film that has multiple languages um, from an actor's perspective? Most most of Greek uh, children go to also to an English um, you know English take English courses since eight nine years old. Um, doing a film uh, with different languages is very interesting. Uh, me because I had the um, uh, I had a character that wasn't feeling uh, easy with all those languages. I was I, I could speak English that. better than Victoras, but it was a choice that Victoras tries to speak English and um, trying to find yourself in another language, trying to find uh, the correct words and uh, the way to express yourself. It was uh, an important point of the whole character, I think. Yeah. Trying to find the languages and feeling insecure uh, uh, against uh, uh, other people, uh, especially Anton, uh, I mean, um, uh, Matthias, who speaks fluently all the languages. Uh, Anton? Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> Um, I also don't grew up bilingual, but I started to learn English in the, I think, fifth grade or so. That's quite normal in, in Germany. And then, of course, growing, growing up watching international movie shows, series. So that's why I'm quite fluent with English. I'm not fluent with uh, Greek or Italian. Uh, to be fluent with Italian was totally uh, just, just a play. <laughs> um, <laughs> But it's I, I, for me as an actor, it's wonderful because, yeah, on the one hand, as a fan, I watch international movies. And I think in this globalized world, uh, for me, there's always a need to connect with other people. And the main thing is through language. And as an actor, as it's for me interesting to have just different sides of a character when I speak other languages. And that's a nice barrier or layer for a character, especially if my character is more outgoing, I can play with him even more because I know, oh, he's insecure. I can change my character. I'm more of a clown or a player when I talk English. And it's happened quite often that you, if you pretend to be American, you go like, yeah, and it was like, and then I was, and I'm going to this and that. And it's, it's good to use something like that. Now, knowing that you both didn't grow up bilingual, I think I'm uh, even more sort of full of praise for the way you've handled all the languages, because performing in another language, you still have to perform and you still have to communicate uh, at a level, you know? And so uh, really congratulations for what you've done with that. That was quite remarkable. Yolanta, let me come to you for a minute. Um, your film uh, is, uh, as even the description of the film says, um, um, a hope for sort of um, ending discrimination, understanding, um, you know, putting away these old ways of looking at things. This is based on experiences that you've had. Um, how much of that reality that is reflected in your film um, is perhaps the dominant reality in uh, Poland uh, today? Ich habe weg, weil das war meine Lehrerin vom Drehbuch. Uh, uh, yes, this is a, a pure reality after the Pope uh, about 30 years ago. Uh, uh, and she has learned it from a friend of her uh, uh, where that just existed. That situation is real. Uh, that That is really coming in that generation where the people are like, uh, Yolanda's age. It was about one year ago before we shot the movie. She heard that story, and and, and, and that film was her 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 ending film of the of the university where she studied. But they didn't allowed to make that film because of oh. the homosexuality. Of course, oh. Poland is now going in a total different direction, like in other countries in in Austria uh, in in Europe. Poland is really going into a totally homophobic uh, region. And she, she was forbidden, she had to go to leave the, the university for making that wow. film. Yes. Wow. So, that's, that's astounding that uh, Europe is much more progressive. And so it's interesting to see that some of these uh, old attitudes um, still sort of exist um, in, in places like Poland. Stelios, can you talk a little bit about uh, queer people in, uh, in Greece? What, um, what is the state of equality for queer people in Greece? 
uh, how are they uh, treated at large, but are um, queer people in your country better off than they were 10 years ago, 20 years ago? Uh, because in Poland, as uh, Andrea said, the, we seem to be going backwards in some ways. Of course, they've been, uh, things are better uh, 10 years uh, f uh, from 10 years before, but there's so much things that need to be done still. I mean, I'm not talking about Poland. They, yeah, indeed, they're doing, uh, they're taking step backwards, but I think they're still, even in more progressive um, uh, countries uh, like uh, Greece or, uh, or Germany, there's still a lot of things to be done. Uh, there's still a lot of racism. There's still a lot of um, hatred. There's still a, a lot of uh, pre prejudice about homosexual people. So yeah, there, there are a lot of things to be done. We still have a long way in uh, to talk about this in order not to be uh, stigmatized or something uh, bad or, or something that, oh, it's a gay story and it's just a story. It's not a gay story. I mean, things right. need eventually to be uh, in a long, yeah. that will take years and years, but things need to be eventually uh, equal for everyone. Great. And, and that's why I asked you that question, because I thought that your film um, was an interesting contrast to Yolanta's film um, in that the queer aspects of the characters were just a, one part of the entire story. It wasn't the center of their angst. It wasn't the center of their conflict. It wasn't even anybody's business in the film. I mean, nobody really comments on it. Nobody makes an issue out of it. Um, and I think that that's a, a, a very nice space to see cinema move into. So can you talk a little bit about your choices and in, in how you reached that? I didn't want to make a, a story about two people that um, are labeled or are referenced as gay. I just want to make uh, a story about two uh, male characters that they start this journey. They meet, uh, they meet in the in the course of this journey and um, they start to have um, a sexual attraction. Uh, so uh, it was very intense not to make uh, or to, to mention if they're gay, straight or whatever. Do you see a lot more of um, European cinema kind of moving into that space where it's the, that angst and that, um, you know, what, what makes Yolanta's film so strong and dramatic? Uh, that that's not necessarily the only way of telling a queer story. So is that where we're moving to with a lot more European cinema, where it's just part of it? I mean, for me, that's the right direction to um, not label anything uh, and just have things uh, find a natural cause and uh, right. let them be. Uh, so uh, I want to believe that, yeah, we're heading towards that direction, but I think they're, uh, they're not so much uh, uh, European films that are liberated uh, from um, gay labels still, I think. Right. Uh, right. But we're getting there. I'm very optimi uh, optimistic about it. Great, great. David, let me come to you. Um, um, so uh, were you aware of uh, these realities uh, for queer people uh, that Yolanta uh, has made the film about, but also has had very personal, deeply um, close uh, connections to those stories? I mean, yeah, definitely, because, you know, I am Polish and, you know, we all hear the news, what's happening in Poland, and I do, you know, hear some family talks about certain topics, so I definitely was aware um, about these issues. But this is why I really wanted to, you know, play that part as well, because I knew it was important. I knew uh, that we really kind of needed to tell this story because there are so many people who feel that way. And yeah, so, but it was interesting because when I was in Poland shooting the movie, then I actually realized how bad it actually is, you know? <laughs> and because I guess I was naive because we always hear in the news that somewhere some something happening homophobic but you know then I was there and you know me and my makeup artists were not allowed you know to cross arms or something or you know kind of show like friend even like friendly you know uh connection to each other and I don't know it was a very you know a kind of a culture shock being in there wow 
Um, uh, uh, Yolanta and Andrea, maybe you can help answer this as well. In, um, in Poland, uh, this sort of um, resurgence of homophobia that we are seeing, is this um, coming from the church or is it a result of political and church players together? It's a combination of, of both, yeah, but, but uh, it, it mainly started, I guess, uh, 20 years ago about the, the people there are very Catholic now uh, because that generation yeah. was really impressed by having a Polish Pope casting the, 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 the actors from there, right? God, uh, God loves you <laughs> in, uh, 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 for the greeting. I make a, oh. a, 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 a film and uh, uh, in Poland too, in Poland and Austria, and uh, one woman uh, wrote, that. wrote this <laughs> God. <laughs> I, I don't know, maybe uh, you can, uh, it's God segne dich. I, I don't God know what God segne is. God bless you. God bless bless yes, <laughs> yes. Okay. That's another thema, you see. In, in Germany and in, in, in Austria and in, in, maybe in Poland, that was not usual because the, it was reduced. You usually say hello or just, but not God, God bless you. Right, right. Uh, okay. what's, you know what's interesting? You, you talk, uh, Yolanta, you yeah. talk about the, uh, the, the influence of the old Pope. Uh, but the current Pope has actually made some interesting uh, gestures of asking the church and its followers to treat gay people with equality, with dignity. Uh, he hasn't quite crossed over into the gay marriage and you know, all those things, but he's certainly been a lot better than many of the past Popes. Um, do you think that that's going to help change things uh, in Poland? Wenig. Die äh, verehren noch den polnischen Papst überall, sind Denkmäler und Schriften, der Papst lebt noch. Uh, Yolanda is maybe a bit more pessimistic because of that, because there are pictures on the street where the, you believe that the Pope is living, the old Pope, uh, the, the Polish Pope. Yeah. I don't know what, what David says, but... You know, course. I was in Poland for Easter, and... Um, I guess they're really trying hard. I mean, um, I mean, like you said, the new Pope actually is doing some kind of changes and is speaking very kindly to about the queer community. And uh, there was even like a like in a morning show a segment where um, they interviewed a gay uh, filmmaker who was, who was making a documentary about the new Pope. And he said he was very friendly to me. He understood that I have a husband and all these things. So I guess. He has a more open-minded view about um, the queer community, but at the same time, I mean, he is, you know, in Italy, where it is basically, you know, this huge power. He is not the one making all these decisions. Oh yeah, sure. So I guess he, like, if he would, you know, do it by himself, I guess we would be much more further. But of course, there are other people with other opinions, and they have to, yeah. you know, get together. Yeah. Uh, Stelios. Uh... Greece has had its history of uh, sort of, you know, homophobia and the Orthodox Church um, in much the same way. Um, how has that changed? Are you also seeing a kind of a maybe stepping back slightly because of the rise of sort of fascism all over the world? Um, and maybe even because of the economic downturns uh, that Greece has seen in the last decade or so? Is that affecting uh, progress that's been made in social issues? Or are you able to sort of um, stay ahead of that still, despite all those other things? Uh, no, I think the Greek Orthodox Church is uh, harming uh, a lot. The liberation of, uh, of people, of thinking uh, more open-minded, uh, and... Uh, and they're shifting people towards this um, fascist direction. Uh, I'm personally, I'm, I'm, I'm very against and against and very furious with the Greek Church, the way they handle um, the masses and uh, of the people, and the way they brainwash the people. If, even now with the coronavirus, they were like, um, oppre they were like. Um, saying not to, to close the churches or not to wear masks in, inside the church. And uh, the way they also rule the state. I mean, it's not like the state and the church is divided here. 
Uh, but in, in in Greece, still, I, they're very. I mean, the, the things they they come out and say are very very harmful, uh, not only to gay people but to humanity in general. Yeah. Um, they spread hate, not love. I think that is true of uh, any kind of Orthodox religion across the world. We're seeing what's happening in the Middle East right now. We're seeing what's happening in India right now. Uh, in America, certainly, and. Um, you know, Yolanta has shared, and David and Andrea have shed light on uh, things happening in Poland. Um, Vasilis and Anton, can you talk a little bit, uh, just outside of the acting world, what would you think about um, the state of um, government and religion and your experiences with it? Of course, you can say like, ah, it's better in Germany than in Greece, than in Poland, than in blah, blah, blah. But I mean, there's, we also have like this Christ Democratic Union with uh, Angela Merkel on top ruling the country for now 16 years and before like there was a switch of some years but I mean it's very in the minds in the mindset of the people I can't see any good out of this yeah. Yeah. what's it is I'm, I'm a bit more uh, optimistic of course I see very very bad things happening um, uh, because of all the fear uh, with with the crisis, uh, the economical crisis that pre-existed uh, since 2008, and now with the pandemic, fear is rising. Uh, so people are are more afraid. So they need more and more uh, dogma. Uh, new, uh, they search for dogma. Uh, and one of the dogmas, of course, is uh, fascism and racism. Uh, racism uh, blaming. Uh, always blaming blaming the, the the different something that is different than me and I'm afraid of it and uh, stuff like that. So um, of course there's a rise of uh, religion and uh, fascism and uh, outright, um, but uh, things are certainly uh, going forward. I think even though governments and the masses do not have the open mindedness yet. Uh, but still, I think that the community, the LGBTQ community, uh, along with the artists, and uh, uh, they have created a lot of awareness, of course. Uh, uh, so I think that uh, things are strong uh, in the community, and this is uh, traveling. So I, I, I am a bit more optimistic that things are at least going forward, at least since I, uh, I, I was a child uh, uh, 20 years ago. There's a wonderful line in uh, Yolanta's film uh, where David's character is sitting in the park with his friend and a woman passes by and says, uh, well, uh, we really need another, a new Hitler. Yolanta, can you talk a little bit about um, what, what motivated that line in particular? No, Ja, wirklich. Und die wollten mich, ich habe gesagt, dass ich Juden bin und die wollten mich gleich nach äh, Auschwitz geben. <lacht> ja, 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 Jolanta told me that when she studied in Poland, uh, uh, she heard that uh, they, uh, they admire Hitler there. I, I mean, they are Polish, but... <lacht> uh, and and she, she made a, a gag to be uh, mm -hmm. Jewish and that wasn't the situation for her. <laughs> she, she heard a radio in a bus uh, from Radio Mar uh, Maria. 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 Don't, uh, it seems to be a Polish center. Liberal of the world. This is from the music. They said that, the, 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 that it was good to, to have him there. So it's really crazy. <laughs> the other actors, David, Basilis and Anton, just address, why do you think we've forgotten these lessons so quickly? You know, it's not like we're going to have to reach back to learn what the ancient Egyptians went through or what the ancient Romans went through. This is this is relatively modern history. But I, I, the last events of the last few years have uh, have had people thought that we tried everything, so why not try things from from the past? I don't know um, this. This whole progressiveness for some uh, made them think uh, um, like totally different uh, re regarding uh, uh, a behavior uh, towards uh, anti-Semitism and, uh, and so on. After the World War, uh, there was a lot of um, big discussion to be made about respecting one another, about the end of emperors, the end of empires. Uh, respecting some borders and uh, 
uh, say that we're done with that. Uh, and that discussion, I think, f uh, when the crisis strikes and when things are difficult, uh, democracy and all the civil rights is, uh, it, it appears to be very complicated. Uh, <laughs> and uh, people, uh, the masses and uh, the leaders, uh, the angry masses looking for uh, ans answers, they need simple uh, horizontal uh, dogmas that uh, say one, two, three and solve the whole problem. Uh, or else you must uh, have a big discussion, the whole history of philosophy, literature, psychoanalysis, sociology, to understand what needs to be done. And that's a very long road. We prefer to say that it's, it's the Jews' fault or it's the uh, homosexuals' fault um, and stuff like that. And, and yeah. healing, healing seems to be a very shortcut road. David, or, uh, David and then Anton? Yeah, like on a lighter note, I mean, I, I totally um, um, give rights to Basilia, what he was saying about people just need, you know, someone to blame something on just to, you know, kind of solve the problem. But like on a lighter note, when we were shooting in Krakow, Krakow is like next to Auschwitz and me and some castmates were like, we got one day off. I think that's the closest we've ever will be to Auschwitz. So let's go there and like, you know, see and learn. And what was so interesting to me because, you know, they were telling everything what was happening, not only to what they did to Jews, but like also the, commun the LGBTQ community. And it was the first time I saw in Poland, like men holding hands because, you know, it was kind of weirdly like so many years after what's been happening there, it kind of became this space where people acknowledge this is wrong and where like two men were feeling comfortable you know holding hands and you know hugging and like being emotional together so that was like very moving to me like the only place in Poland where I like saw two men you know showing affection to each other was in Auschwitz which was shocking <laughs> yeah and how ironic that it is at a camp where many of them only 60 80 years ago were yeah. sent to the gas chambers you know so yeah Anton I think the problem is the a lot of people they don't want to feel guilt anymore. You know, they are really looking for I want to be proud at my country again, and that's very problematic. I guess. I mean, it is of course because I don't understand how you can be proud of a nation or where you have been born by coincidence. But <laughs> there is a saying of a theater maker uh, Thomas Brasch, and he said like looking at humanity at itself like the whole how long we are living on this earth and then looking at how 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 when how when this took place it's just a blink away yeah. it's, a, it's, it's a second so of course we have to feel guilt and the whole problem we are seeing and aiming at right now is just because of this uh lie or story tale of denazification there was no no real denazification I mean, a few, a few maybe got in prison, but most of them were soldiers and became policemen, became teachers. And it's all still in the mindset, you know, and going through the school. And so it's always part of the society. And there was no, no real aiming at change the mindset. I mean, it's hard for us as actors to talk about topics, but it's on the human side. We have to talk about it and I yes, think absolutely. as, as absolutely. actors, as creatives, as human loving beings, that's a way of yeah, doing movies, doing art, showing love, yeah. showing connections, togetherness and giving hope to people. Yeah. Good. I'm glad you said that, um, Anton, because my next question is for the three um, actors. What are your views on, on love and how love can oh, maybe, okay. um, and then family, um, can, can help um, maybe change some of these things that we're talking about? I just feel like you have to, like sexuality, sexuality doesn't define you as a person at all. It is kind of a part of you, but it doesn't say anything about how kind you are, how hardworking you are, how you know generous you are. It doesn't say all these things and people need to start looking at people as those adjectives basically, because you know, who I love, does not hurt you at all <laughs> and you know it's been tough I'm not gonna lie with in my 
personal family, but they need to learn, and which is why we need some of these stories being told in yes. the mainstream or not, not even in the mainstream, but like we just need this kind of education for those people who need to learn that those are people with real feelings and I'm gonna get emotional, but like, <laughs> no. and you know, I just, this is why art is so important, why storytelling is so important and we need those stories out there. I agree, David, well said. Yeah. Um, Vasilis and Anton, can you talk a little bit about that? I think that um, uh, my generation until uh, five years ago, maybe, uh, we had very bad examples as a generation as to where family <laughs> heads to at least in Greece, I think. So I think we had a lot of uh, negative um, and we had a lot of talking about uh, uh, being alone and standing alone and having friends and I don't know. Uh, but now with the pandemic, I think there's uh, a newfound respect. Uh, I think I'm beginning to sense it among, among uh, my, my generation, a newfound respect for uh, for um, um, uh, making a family and holding it together, for making children, for having children, even though the uh, you know the grounds seem very um, toxic and uh, we see a, a, a dystopia, uh, that is, I think, the miracle uh, of the human instinct. That in this uh, dystopia, uh, I see young people feeling the need to do something. <laughs> Uh, very, very crucial and um, uh, essential as to giving birth uh, and making uh, making it work, making it. Uh, but uh, the uh, I hope I hope that uh, the the family uh, does not concentrate all all the love um, out there. Uh, I think that is the danger, and uh, that is what religion pushes us to concentrate the love in uh, you know a, a, a very tight uh, chorus that's called my my wife my husband my children and that's it I, I believe in uh, concentric circles I believe that you have of course your uh, very close people you have your family then you have your friends and I believe very much in the community for my generation I believe uh, in a newfound respect for community, independent of government, of, of, of gov governments, uh, a sense of community in terms of profession or political views, I don't know, making communities and uh, sharing the love there too. Uh, it's different types of love. I think it's like concentric circles. That's my view. Fantastic. Anton? Yeah, I, I can just uh, totally stick to that. What was just been uh, told by David and Vasily, I, I think it's important or I wish I could grow up even more uh, with the feeling of um, you can love whoever you want. Um, it's humans you fall in love with, you feel connected to. Family um, can be a fluid construct. You can choose, you can have chosen family, you know, you can have your blood family, but you can yeah, start to invite friends to become your family. And that's so important for people who don't feel loved or, or yeah, don't feel loved in, in their main family. It's possible to find other people to, to be connected. And that's, I think, what it's all about, to fill, fill up the room, the space where you live, as long as you live with, with love. Yeah. Great, great. Um, in the, the, the films that um, you both have made, can you talk a little bit about uh, the challenges you faced in getting the, if any, in getting the film made? Every filmmaker knows that raising the money is virtually impossible. Uh, so can you talk a little bit about the challenges you faced both in the, the making of the film and the actual execution of it? The film, because the, the story, um, it's a road trip that starts from um, Greece and ends up uh, goes through the whole Italy and ends up in uh, in Germany. We uh, it it was very tough to um, find the funding, um, but um, I I was really blessed with a really good uh, producers team. At the end, it, it ended up being uh, a fund between the between Cyprus, uh, where I'm from, uh, Greece, and Italy. Uh, the good thing 
in Europe, uh, we get state fundings from films. Mm -hmm. We managed to do the film, but still, I mean, we still had a very tight budget. We shot in 10 different cities in Italy. We were on the road all the time. We had a lot of fun during the shooting, but uh, still, I think um, everything worked out. But at the end, I'm very happy for, for the experience because we all came out from this, including me and the actors, um, more, um, more wise, let's say, from this experience. Uh, Yolanta and Andrea, please, because you're the producer on the film, so if you could address that as uh, well. Uh... Uh, yeah, this film was totally paid by Yolanta herself uh, because she hasn't ever got uh, money by the state. We, in Vienna, we have really a good uh, system, but we have so many uh, famous directors here in Austria. And uh, they also, they like the topics. In fact, they would usually they would, uh, if Haneke or one of the Oscar nominees would do that film, they, they would get a million for that, yeah, because yeah. it's the story they, they want to support. But Yolanda didn't get any money, so they had to buy, pay about 30,000 euros. So it's really much, it's about $30,000. And uh, so she had to do it by herself. And, and that was also a reason why she shot maybe in Poland because it's a bit cheaper there right. but uh, uh, it's, it's really she's producing it she's uh, casting it it's so much work for her uh, and it's always at a limit what she can do so after that she was in hospital I mean oh. uh, uh, yeah uh, so yeah they, they, that's so crazy she, she cooked for the people uh, working on the Amazing. set well, that's that's really great what she does. What she does. Oh, this is why the world needs more artists. Uh, I always say that. Uh, Stilios and Yolanta, can you talk a little bit very quickly about uh, how the reception of the film has been? Uh, I have no idea. I haven't been into a screen with the film. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. okay. So yeah, because of the pandemic, I, I have not seen the screening. Okay. I think the crew haven't seen the film. I sent okay. Vasilis and Anna in order to see it uh, a few months ago. We are lucky that um, people have seen it through film festivals uh, since uh, January that it opened up. Okay. Uh, we get a lot of uh, messages, um, good <laughs> feedback, so it's nice. I mean, we get good. our feedback, but good. I really, really hope uh, to get into a screening with people soon. Good. To watch. Um, Yolanta, Andreas? I mean, I mean uh, uh, in Austria, the, the cinemas was, were closed till next week, so okay. we had no start here. But we have been, of course, in some festivals, uh, but none with actual screening till yeah. now, though yeah. it could be a yeah. world premiere. Uh, but uh, in, uh, in Vienna, the, 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 Minister uh, the funding system, uh, the people there saw the film and they said, wow, that's a great film. So, but they didn't get, uh, Yolanda money. didn't get, get money for the next film. For next film. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it, it doesn't change anything. But right. uh, yeah, yeah, we hope that we, we get a good start here. And uh, there, are many, there are at least four festivals here in Vienna which have LPTQ uh, uh, topics. And uh, so, Maybe they show it or we show it. That, that will be then. I guess next year. Great. Yeah. I, I'll come back to uh, everybody's next projects. I just want to have one conversation about um, cinema making. You know, in casting, um, we now have to be very careful about who we cast, and I think that that's very true because predominantly, you know, um, white actors, Caucasian actors, have gotten roles that were not necessarily just for Caucasians, but that's because that's what the dominant market supported. So there is clearly a need for casting more diversely, more uh, sort of broadly. But when it comes to uh, LGBT uh, films, queer films, uh, there's an interesting kind of a paradox. Um, because on the one hand, I think um, any actor who is openly gay uh, will say that they don't want to be boxed into just playing gay characters. Uh, that they would like to play any kind of character. And yet what's happening in the UK and the US is that they're saying that only a trans person now can play a trans role. Uh, so does that mean that we now only have gay people playing gay parts? What, what do you all feel? And, and is this something that's happening in Europe as well? Trans actor, it's a very specific uh, 
me a uh, category. Uh, so yeah, I totally agree for that, that, that you have paid by transaction. But with the same uh, thing that we have a gay actor, a space uh, role, I don't think uh, people should get limited. Um, Yolanta? Yeah, she all she also she answered it to me. So uh, in fact, that doesn't uh, matter in films of Yanta. A gay can play everything uh, and uh, in a different side. So right. okay. it doesn't matter. Of course, we in Austria when we sh see the diversity, we don't have so much uh, African American, African Austrian filmmakers, yes. uh, uh, actress in Austria. I guess ten. So we can't make it totally oh, diverse, sure. that's clear. Yeah. yeah, and I think what, what Stelios uh, reiterates about trans actors being a very specific, yes. I, I think that's, a, that's an important point to keep in mind. Um, any of the actors want to comment on this? Because uh, you probably face this a lot in auditions <laughs> and your casting uh, experiences. Um, people who identify themselves as gay should not only be cast as in gay roles, they should, you know, get cast in any roles they really want to because, but I do have a problem if someone is heterosexual and is cast in a gay role. I do have a problem with that just because there are so many gay actors, you know, right. and I just can't imagine that there was not one gay actor who could could have done that part, you know, even maybe yeah. even back because there's a certain authenticity with that. I mean, I'm saying that to a certain extent, if there is, you know, a heterosexual actor who actually wants to learn to know the culture of being a gay man in this world, I'm totally all for that. But like, just, you know, take a look close at the other gay actors first. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think there's a big case to be made about uh, increasing the, um, the, 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 the actors that we've not paid attention to for so long. Anton, uh, Vasilis, any last uh, points on this? And then we'll wrap up. I, th I think it's a very interesting topic. It's, uh, we speak about it finally a lot in Germany as well. But yeah, I, th I think there are just many, many layers in this discussion. And I think the one important thing is representation. And if there is not enough representation, it's very important to, as David said, like give, the, give them a face give them the chance yeah. to to be casted um the, the other thing that stelios mentioned i think it's also very important there i mean we are actors we can play a lot we can murder people we don't have to murder people in real life I mean, that's not the comparison right but right uh, for example in this in our movie it was two people mm -hmm. falling in love i was mm -hmm. maybe bisexual pansexual whatever so it fitted it don't has to be a, a gay or queer actor i i think so it's yeah it's really important of what is the movie what does the one movie tell and how deep is it digging how deep is it going how personal is the story and what we often criticize is that it's uh, in mainstream media it's just scratching the surface if you have a have a yeah, TV series and no, uh, and they they claim we are the first gay uh, series and everything is in pink light and all the actors are not gay. Then of course it's like what the fuck, what the right. fuck. But right. of course if if yeah. yeah if you put enough effort in it and talk to people once again connect with people then yeah, could be Great. possible. Vasilis. Uh, just one comment on the on the trans uh, issue that you mentioned earlier. Uh, I agree with that. Uh, I agree. You have to you have to see it. I think in terms of of, of his history history of uh, uh, of society and history of cinema as, as parallels. Uh, right now, uh, the, the the transgender issue is. Um, is finally opening in, in terms, we have uh, the first reality show, RuPaul, uh, we have a lot of uh, movies um, with that um, issue, and we have people of the trans community actually speaking up. So why see for another time uh, the, the, the mastering of acting and of makeup <laughs> artists and the transformation of Dustin Hoffman into a woman? <laughs> <laughs> We know that that yeah. the cinema business can do that. We know that they can uh, tra transform um, uh, people. Right now, what we wanna we wanna hear uh, we wanna hear those people uh, express themselves, and we wanna see those people finding a place in all society. So in cinema too. 
uh, uh, one last question to all of you. Um, what's next for each of you? Um, can you talk a little, if you're allowed to talk about uh, um, your your next project? Uh, Yolanta? Uh, uh, we, we make a film, uh, it's called Desire. Uh, it's uh, uh, a kind of love stories. Uh, Strategic, uh, 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 but uh, also capitalistic, anti-capitalistic a bit because uh, that will be an issue after Corona. How can you earn money enough? Uh, that will be for everybody. I mean, Austria opens tomorrow or on Monday. Then it, it's the first time for culture after half year. So I guess in Germany it will be you can you we can say when it open, but uh, for artists that will be also a big uh, issue. Uh, and and uh, there were many movies shot in Austria during the lockdowns, uh, but uh, uh, you didn't hear about that. So you you had no access to that because it was very close because the other society sh should not know know that because. Uh, uh, they didn't understand how the testing system was. I mean, we have really hard, you had to, to be tested every day, you weren't allowed to go out and 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 uh, that is also our relation. We, we have uh, in two months, we are shooting again, uh, the second part of that film. And we, we said to everybody, I mean, we are injected, we, we got vaccinated, but the young actors, Will not will have to be tested, and that will be not easy because uh, yeah. that costs time, yeah, and it's eff very much effort. But I guess it will be a good film, Yolanda. Yeah, uh, Stelios. Next uh, is uh, up, yeah, in the uh, meantime. Right, this is a uh, uh, screenplay the last two years. Uh, it's an all women's film, uh, so family film. Um, that I have submitted to Greece and Cyprus, and now I'm waiting for the funding. But I, I don't plan to shoot anytime soon. I, I like I, I want some time to like focus on some other things that are related to cinema, uh, and hopefully by 2023 we will start shooting and like diving to this new project that I'm hoping to make. Great, great. David? My project is to get out of this pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a big project for many, many people, uh, <laughs> including us here in India, I'm afraid. Uh, yeah, well, I wish you well. Um, okay. Anton? Well, I should have a premiere tomorrow in Cologne at a theater, but of course, because of the pandemic, it's not going to happen. So we just made a radio play and mix it with some video shots so this will be a stream or something like that on the theater side and then yeah i'll do some radio plays and right now i'm uh, recording some music because my first album will come out in september so i'll do some other art influence stuff and yeah waiting for castings to come in and then hopefully start shooting again at some day Wait. Uh, while while waiting the pandemic to end <laughs> I, I i i'm right now directing uh, uh, a radio play that uh, i wrote um, it's a very with a bit more friends in a home studio we're making a, um, a radio play about aliens uh, coming to greece and uh, <laughs> something with the vaccines and something with the pandemic some uh, political satire of the reality anyways so uh, all those three months uh, that's what uh, we mainly do every day this is our main occupation and we hope we make it into an animation film in the future uh, but as an actor i uh, right now i have uh, some uh, theater shows uh, in the autumn that are waiting i hope that we can make it yeah, so I just want to end with saying a couple of things. Uh, one, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm very encouraged, uh, even though um, you, you all talked about um, things not being as good as they could be for artists and for progressive ideas and progressive people. Um, I'm, I'm glad that, um, you know, you're still able to do things that are political and uh, Google and uh, plays about aliens and anti-capitalism. <laughs> Uh, because I think it's important um, 
given that that space uh, is shrinking uh, much faster in a lot of places, including in India, I'm sorry to say, uh, we would not be able to do a lot of um, that right now because the, the climate is just very politically very, very difficult. So I, I applaud you and I, I hope that you will keep uh, doing more of that and, and expanding those spaces where you can. And, um, and finally, I think, you know, all of you uh, should be extremely proud of uh, the work each of you have done on uh, the film in your various capacities. Uh, because again, I think this is a perfect example of people, a group of people who are expanding the identities and the stories and the perspectives and the types of storytelling um, that are available to audiences. And I, I, I you know, applaud you and thank you for that. Thank, thank you, you very much. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Keza, for this wonderful chat. You brought in so many different perspectives, uh, history, politics, uh, racism, sexuality, everything combined together. Wonderful chat. Uh, really, thank you, Keza, and thanks each one of you for your wonderful views.